First up today is Sam. Hello, my name's Sam Jones. I'm the director of the New Care Model Programme. I'm going to briefly canter through some of the context and the history taking us up to today and then hand over to Paul Dinkin, who is the national lead for this particular vanguard. I really, really want somebody to put their hands up and be brave and, when, and answer this question by when I say, has anybody not read the five-year forward view? One day somebody will say they haven't. It is a shared vision across the seven um, arm's length bodies and that's a really important point, particularly for all of the vanguards, um, the 37 that we've already identified and the futures coming through uh, from today because the seven arm's length bodies are committed to working across supporting the implementation of the care models because we know that these will only be delivered if the system works together to support the local implementation. So just to put to get a bed, even a myth, uh, the new care models are not just about the NHS. Within all of the existing vanguards, and we'll be pushing very strongly to see from today's vanguard presentations how social care and other voluntary sector partners are included and working closely with the vanguards. So the challenges that we face, well rehearsed, documented in a number of different ways, but for when you come to do your value propositions, business case lights as we like to call them, the triple aims identified are the gaps that we're trying to address through the new care model programme. The health and wellbeing gap, the care and quality gap, and of course the efficiency gap. It is all three that need to be addressed as we move forward. Bit of a test for anybody, these are the five care models, multi-specialty community providers, care homes, or not hair homes, integrated primary and acute care systems, urgent and emergency care, and the acute care collaboration. The values of the programme for when we set them up earlier on this year, and all the way through everything we do, and again we'll be pushing to see this in practice today through the presentations, not there's a clue in everything that I'm saying, and certainly from the questions that we'll be asking from the floor, is around how clinical engagement is all the way through. So when we've been interviewing for members of the care model team, when we've been working with our vanguards, every single step of the way, we are looking to see how clinical engagement is all the way through. Similar with patient involvement, this isn't about doing two, this is about working with local communities in a totally different way for the health of the population. We'll be pushing this and looking to see this in quite a lot of detail um, behind. We all know change won't be delivered if it's not delivered locally. So what we're saying is the vanguards are to deliver locally with national replicability and therefore national support to move and support the blocks being moved out of the way. All the way through the values of the programme and again for all of the vanguards as we move forward are around addressing and covering these four values. The weather map, these are the 37 vanguards that there, there currently are up and down the country. Many of you will have um, seen them, many of you will be involved in the vanguards. In many places we have 10, 12 different health, social care, voluntary sector organisations working together. If you haven't seen the videos, it's a bit late, it would have been useful to have seen them before this morning, but they are available online and they are available on YouTube. Uh, they're also a two-page summary of each of the vanguards in terms of what they're trying to achieve, including the urgent and emergency care vanguards from a few weeks ago. We are filming the event today and tomorrow, and all of your presentations will also be going up online. This is to ensure that we have online collaboration sharing right from the beginning. This is for everybody, irrespective of whether you're chosen as a vanguard or not, because lots of good work, who knew, is happening outside of the vanguards and we are sharing this as we go forward. So, success will look like nationally replicable models. Full stop. If you are here as a vanguard looking to just do your local, which is fantastic, please leave now. Because we're looking, and the engagement up front is around nationally replicable model. Rep I can't even say it, let alone do it. Nationally replicable models. This isn't about doing something locally in Birmingham that cannot be real-time supported and developed across the country. I happen to use Birmingham. There's no hidden agenda around Birmingham. 
please, for illustrative purposes only. And I make this point because right up front, as vanguards, the national replicability is fundamental to everything we do. It doesn't take away from the local, because local delivery is what we're here for, but it's about the nationally replicable. We thought it would be helpful just to summarise some of the key themes and characteristics coming out of the existing vanguards. These are all available online. They're not uh, new. Um, we've done a thematic review and shared back with the vanguards, and this formed the basis of the support <coughs> programme, which we published at the end of July. But we thought it would just be useful to share with you for the PACs, the primary and acute care systems, all have community-based multidisciplinary teams, including physical and mental health. It isn't about just physical health. It's not just about the elderly. It's about mental health, and it's about the population that's served. It isn't about just the elderly or the adults. So all the way through, the population health focus is what's come through. All have strategies, unsurprisingly, focused on keeping people out of hospital unnecessarily. Admissions avoidance, rapid response teams, um, improving discharge from hospital. Now, many of these schemes are not new, and many are happening up and down the country. It's the scale and the size with the vanguards which is making the difference. And all intend to create, and many are already along the way creating a single care single care record, sharing real-time patient information. So Airedale, and not just Airedale, the Care Home 6, as um, they like to call themselves, share information from a care home, real-time in A&E, real-time in the GP practice, and real-time so that everybody can see and prevent and have the data recorded um, for what's happening with the population. For multi-specialty community providers, Everybody's at a different stage. We're not looking for uniformity in terms of where people are. Everyone is designing care around both the complex patients, but also the risk stratification for the whole of the population. It isn't just for the most complex and the most challenged. Enhanced primary care, fundamental to the multi-specialty community providers around the registered list. Absolutely primary care at scale, working with the GPs community integrated teams, specialist care in the community, and really just starting with a blank sheet of paper and saying, what does the future look like? Not what we have now, because we wouldn't start here, but there are some core principles, such as the registered list for the multi-specialty community providers. And again, everyone's using multidisciplinary teams, information hubs, self-care, and everybody is working closely with their local population and uh, very closely with the local community. Care homes, um, similar, it's not just about what's happening in the care homes. So if you have two minutes, I know that's ridiculous because nobody has two minutes, but if you have two minutes, really have a look at what the care homes are doing and have a look at what the multi-specialty community providers are doing. It's not just about what's happening in the care homes. It's around working with the local population, the local primary care, keeping the most vulnerable in the places that they should be, but also absolutely working with uh, uh, carers, with the families themselves, it's not just what's happening in the care homes. And I think people are missing opportunities to do massive learning. East and North Hearts, for example, um, care home work is around the local population. The work that they're doing and already involving and making the changes, technology, co-commissioning, out outcome-based uh, commissioning, some really detailed work happening across all of the care home vanguards. You'll be unsurprised to note that there were common challenges pulled out from all of the vanguards. The vanguards told us this is what their issues were. We shared it back with them. Leadership and organisational development. I think you wouldn't have to be a vanguard to state these are the issues that need to be addressed. And it's not about the top of the organisation. It's around clinicians working across the community, across primary care, together with the population. It's having a different type of conversation in a different language that, we, uh, uh, that the vanguards say they need support um, and development with. Workforce. I know many, many, many of us are struggling with this issue around workforce. How do we create the workforce for the future? Not based on 1948, but based on what we need now. 
and a significant component of work going on through the national programme is around the workforce. Commissioning and contracting models. When we come on to talk about the enablers, this is a big enabler where the national bodies are working hand in glove together, if that's the right expression. So we have, we know incentives that work the wrong way to support population health. We have a single year contracts that work against what we're trying to achieve. This is being picked up through uh, the integrated uh, commissioning uh, enabler, which I'll talk a bit more about. Evaluation. Um, close to workforce, this causes the most um, amount of discussion, stress and anxiety for people. We're doing real-time evaluation. We have the team here who are developing the logic models um, as they go. I won't do any uh, uh, disjustice to the phenomenal work that's happening around the logic models and real-time evaluation. But we're doing lots of master classes, so if you're chosen and you move forward as a vanguard, you'll get to know and love logic models and the work around them in a lot of detail because they're based on evidence against the triple aims that I referred to up front. And information management and technology. I think I'm quoted as saying if we do nothing else through the new CAM model program, we will address and support the sharing of information and technology and interoperability. So, we did all those visits. We started the program in March. We did the two-day visits, and um, we fed back to the vanguards. This is what you said you uh, needed support with um, from the thematic reviews and the analyses that, you've, uh, that I've just cantered through, and there are eight. They look from, uh, remarkably like the Health Foundation's constructive comfort document around the evidence of why change isn't delivered sustainably in the NHS. So depending on which way you're looking at the screen, you have the type ones, the policy changes that need to be addressed, such as the um, integrated commissioning and provision. And Ian's here as the national uh, director from NHS England, who has a personal quest to get this addressed and fundamentally sorted so that the vanguards are supported locally through the national policy of tariff uh, around um, the way that we do um, multi-year, multi-capitated, multi-incentive, multi-everything based contracts. There's three, diff four different work streams under this. Um, this was published at the end of July. I'm not going to go through um, in detail. But each one of these is co-sponsored by a vanguard leader and a national subject matter expert. Because what we're saying is this is about local delivery being supported by the national subject matter experts. So on the left-hand side, you have the policy drivers, for example. You have um, empowering patients and communities. We have to fundamentally change the way that we are engaging, we're talking with our local population, our local communities. These are sponsored um, and led by um, individual Vanguard leaders, and they will be commissioning the national support. The reason I'm laboring this point is because there's a clue as to when you're a Vanguard, if you get through, we'll be looking for local leaders to be co-commissioning with us to make sure that the national program addresses the need of local delivery. <coughs> On that side, whichever side you're looking at it, I'll be a really bad weather girl, we have the softer but the hard stuff, the change, the working with the leadership, about the how we do this, and a huge amount of work going on, supported by experts in their field as to how we truly bring about change, having a community uh, support, making sure that the learning is coming real time by people who are actually doing it, as opposed to people who are just talking about it, something that we're trying to avoid um, as we go. And um, the workforce redesign, the one um, on the bottom, at the right or the left, depending on which one, number seven, um, led by Jim um, as our national uh, vanguard leader. And we have workforce advisory group comprising um, Health Education England, people who are focused on population health. So all the way through, the national seven arm's length bodies are supporting and sponsoring the program. Uh, we have a blended team within the care model team that has... Um, we have lots of learning and challenges about how that works in practice, but fundamentally it's about supporting the local vanguards to deliver. And you'll see in the middle, this is around the local delivery, but ensuring the national replicability. So everything we do, we have our eye on, making sure it happens locally, but is being delivered and it's paid for once and the intellectual property is shared and it's live at the same time nationally. So the ACC, the Acute Care Collaboration um, Vanguard, was originally launched at the same time as the other Vanguard um, programs. 
and it was originally referred to as a viable smaller hospitals in the five-year forward view. Um, feedback from people at the time was it was too narrow focus um, and which we agreed with so we pulled it back and we, um, gosh, about six weeks ago, asked for expressions of interest based on the feedback that many people had given and who'd also been involved in shaping this Vanguard program moving forward. Built, building on um, the proposals um, set out in the Dalton Review and making sure the clue here is around seeking collaboration in practice and it's not just about organisational forms. So if it focuses on organisational forms, we're focusing and starting in the wrong place. I always feel like I should walk around at this point with a kind of a thing above my head that goes clue um, every time we say. So when we're looking and when we've been reviewing the uh, Vanguard applicants, um, all the way through we've been looking for collaboration. As, um, and um, as Simon said, uh, testing new ways of sustaining local NHS hospital services but absolutely reducing variation and absolutely making sure that we're standardising best practice moving forward. More details can be found on the website um, and uh, follow on Twitter and also ask any member of the team and they will be publishing as we go over the next few months. The support package, if you haven't seen it, please I urge you to have a look at it because we will be publishing as we go to so some very strict pacey timetable of products that people can have a look at and make sure that we're learning real time, one of the core components of the programme. So I'm going to uh, get to the right slide at the right time and hand over to Paul, who is the national lead for acute care. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Paul Dinkin, and I am the national lead for new models of acute care collaboration. Um, for those of you who are here for previous Vanguard events, you'll notice one important difference from those events, um, and that's that there are no sweets on the table today, which there usually are. Um, some of you may have either heard or seen reported Simon Stevens' speech last week at Expo uh, talking about building a healthy NHS workforce. Um, uh, one of the people who did see that reported was the facilities managers here at the Oval who told me this morning that she'd seen it and therefore had not put any sweets on the table. So uh, we'll see what we can do about a sugar rush in the afternoon. And, and, uh, uh, but apologies, uh, apologies for that. Um, now, we've got an increasingly good understanding of the extent of variations across the NHS. Um, including uh, in, in acute care. And those are variations sometimes by service, sometimes by day of the week or time of the day, and sometimes across different providers. Uh, we've also uh, know that a large number of providers who are delivering high quality acute services today uh, tell us that they're going to struggle to sustain those services into the future. Last week I was speaking to uh, a provider who told me that uh, they've got two problems at the moment. One is that their maternity service they feel is probably unsustainable in the longer term. The second is that they keep on winning awards for how good it is today. Um, and, and, and they're wondering how on earth they sort of square that and, and, and build a case for moving forward uh, and making changes. Um, finally, we also know that it's increasingly difficult, nigh on impossible, to address those challenges by working, uh, by individual providers working in isolation across the sector. Um, and it's with that in mind that we've got uh, two days' worth of presentations that we're going to hear from for this care model, aimed at addressing both of those two challenges. The first around how to reduce um, variations in cost and quality of delivering uh, acute services across the country, and the second into how to uh, support the clinical and financial sustainability of services um, uh, across the NHS. Um, and we're going to hear about three different forms of collaboration that we invited expressions of interest for uh, earlier in the year. The first is around uh, chains or foundation groups. Uh, the second around uh, specialty-focused franchises uh, or networks. And the third around uh, more general uh, networks for acute services. And we're going to hear about all three of those over the next uh, two days. Um, we've done a pretty terrible job of shortlisting. Uh, so we had, um, we had over 65 expressions of interest, and we, had a, uh, we thought, well, let's try and get down to around 15 to 20 for today's event and tomorrow's event. Um, we've singularly failed to do that, and I think that's a reflection of the quality of the proposals that we've, um, that we've received. We've had a, a pretty rigorous process over the last two or three weeks to get them reviewed by a combination of patients, clinicians, representatives of the different arm's length bodies that have kind of central roles uh, in the oversight and support of running the NHS. 
Um, and on the back of that, and a big shortlisting panel meeting that we had uh, a couple of weeks ago, we've got down, we've got down to 29. So um, just a quick pause to say a huge, huge thank you, both to everyone here who's obviously put in a lot of time to preparing presentations, but also uh, to those of you, including patients, clinicians, and others who are here today, and some who are not, who've helped in the reviewing, because it's really, I think, helped us get to a good, a good place. Um, in terms of how much time people have given up, um, We've asked everyone to give up two days of their time, two days of your time, to be here. Um, and I'm conscious that, that all of you do proper jobs, uh, you know, out there in the NHS as opposed to people like me um, working back in Skipton House or Wellington House. Um, on the whole, we, we don't apologise for asking you to be here for two days. A huge thank you for it. Um, there are two forms of collaboration at the heart of the Vanguard's program. One is between different providers or providers and commissioners who are coming together to form individual Vanguards and talk about how they're going to work together differently. But the second is across different Vanguards, so across um, different groups of people around the country who are trying to develop and implement new ways of working. And today's event and tomorrow's event is not incidental to that. This is exactly the kind of collaboration that we have in mind, of people sitting and listening to and sharing and feeding back and challenging, where appropriate, other people's proposals to try and get the best out of, the best out of what's in the room. Uh, so we're going to hear about 29 different proposals over the next couple of days. We're going to have a roundtable discussions at the end of each day, um, just for everyone to have a bit of a chance to sort of reflect and, and, and discuss uh, in groups uh, views about what you've heard, about what you think, about how it stimulated new thinking. We're going to try and capture some of those notes. So everyone will end up getting some feedback from the team uh, next month, whether selected or, or, or ultimately not, not selected. Uh, and at the end of tomorrow, finally, we're going to be asking people to um, really to actually vote for the proposals that have most um, stimulated their thinking and interest and they'd like to see taken forward as part of the program. Uh, and all of that will be uh, part of the input that gets taken to the new care models board with a view to uh, selecting some new vanguards uh, later this month. Um, in terms of ambition and in terms of challenge, just to uh, quickly, finally, to remind everyone of the criteria that we've used and that the reviewers have used in exploring the proposals that we've had. Um, so the first is about clarity about what it is you're trying to achieve. And, and there are quite a few proposals where we really had to sort of read them a number of times to really get that um, clear picture of what actually was being proposed. And so I think that's the first box that needs ticking for everyone who stands up here today and tomorrow, is to make sure that in a very short space of time, the rest of the room has a good understanding of what it is you're trying to achieve. Um, the second is going back to the sorts of challenges that I referred to earlier on um, about clinical financial sustainability, about reducing avoidable variations in cost and quality. Tell us how your proposals are going to help, are going to, help to achieve uh, one or both of those two uh, important objectives. Um, the third is around sort of clarity in terms of how much progress you've made uh, so far. So we know that um, no vanguards who have been selected or, or who are going to be selected started their thinking as a result of us launching this program. This program has been set up as a way of accelerating and supporting um, existing ambition to, to happen quicker and to happen better. So, so tell us about how far you've got. And then number four, tell us about actually how much progress you're going to be able to make over the next over the next 12, 24 months. So, so what's key here is that we're looking for um, those proposals that have really got, are in a position to be able to drive forward with a sense of purposefulness and be able to, to share the lessons from that across the rest of the NHS. Um, fifth, uh, we talked about the proposals including a clear articulation of the support required for the national program. Um, what do you need from us? Um, Sam talked about the various areas of support that the program has currently set out that it's going to be providing for existing vanguards. We expect that to be extended and we'll be publishing by the end of November exactly what the new support package or updated support package will look like given the additional vanguards we would have chosen. Um, and finally, I won't talk about this because Sam already has done, but the importance of replicable lessons. So we've had some proposals that look as though they might be quite niche. If that is the case, then tell us how actually um, involved, in, involved in the proposal that you've, 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 you've shared with us for today, how that's going to be replicable, how it's going to be helpful and important for other parts of the NHS to be able to, to look and learn from. Um, and effectively, you know, we've backed the 29 who are here today and here tomorrow because we think... Um, these are the best that we've seen, and we look forward to hearing more about them. Thanks. Thank you, Paul.